so well. I feel like I got some style moves. You look, you look like you know what you're doing. I mean, you're drifting, you're boosting on the drift, running the ball. <laughs> All right, so. All right, ready when you are. Um, Welcome to the Day Over Day Ray. My name is Stephen Logue. I'm Sam Miller. Today we're going to be reviewing Man of Steel. First, we'd like to start by apologizing for not getting too many of these out over the summer. It was a busy season. Um, seminarians have a lot of responsibilities even over the summer, even though we're not in classes. I was on the farm all summer. We a new program where I worked on a farm with other seminarians. Sam was not there, and needless to say, we didn't have a TV or DVD player. So it's kind of hard when you're trying to review movies. So we're just going to review the ones that we saw in the summer and put them out as often as we can. Uh, Man of Steel is directed by uh, Zack Snyder, and it stars Henry Cavill as uh, the man in blue uh, and Amy Adams as Lois Lane. Um, the general plot is that Superman, it's another origin story, uh, and it's not your typical Superman origin story. So if you're familiar with the, uh, the old Superman movies and even the comic books, it's going to throw you off a little bit. Uh, Zack Snyder decided to put a little more uh, political emphasis in the Kryptonian opening with uh, um, Superman's father, uh, Jor-El, and the political goings on there. Um, it was, they spent a good amount of time on Krypton, yeah, like at least which was very minutes. cool, very believable. It was very interesting. And it just follows from there. We go into, we go into Earth, and we just kind of start off with Superman as a man, basically. Uh, it's really kind of a different Superman take on Superman's story. And uh, Steve and I loved it, pretty much. It was good. Yeah. It's definitely a coming-of-age movie. There are a lot of Christ metaphors, something we'll talk about later, mm -hmm. as something to watch for if you haven't already seen it. Other than that, um, I really enjoyed it. The, mm -hmm. the bad guy, of course, is General Zod, who you might know from the comics. If not, you'll, they'll fill you in. One of the things that we want to talk about early on, uh, we just want to make sure that you all get the, um, the basic points down before we get into the spoiler and our analysis of the plot um, and what you can take from it. Um, are the good points... Um, like Steve was saying, lots of Christ metaphors. Seminarians, we see this. Like it's very that. obvious. Uh, they didn't. They did it subtly, and really obviously at some parts. Like you really can't miss them. And um, they were both uh, deep metaphors that you kind of have to pick apart. I and mean, maybe we're reading into it, but there were also very obvious metaphors on the surface that were pretty blatant and um, hard to miss. Yeah. So the positives: good acting all around. Um, I know a lot of uh, skepticism has been put on Amy Adams as Lois, but I think she does a pretty good job. Um, she may pick it up a little better. Like, I don't know. I thought it was pretty good. I, didn't, I think she was a little not. fiery at times. She had a lot more um, chutzpah. chutzpah, there you go, than other Lois Lanes oh. I've seen. So that was good in some ways. It also was a little, I don't know, could be putting off. In other words, yeah, off I don't know. Um, General Zod, uh, he's a good bad guy. You know, he doesn't gross you out. He doesn't, you know, he's just, he's not just a mustache twirler. Uh, he's, he's got emotion behind him. He's got a personality. Um, what'd you think? I like General Zod. I thought he was good. He wasn't, he was very believable. You could see where he was coming from. You could understand his, his logic and what had gotten him to this point. He wasn't just evil for the sake of being evil. Um, yeah. And he was a good foil for Superman. Yeah. I mean, better than Superman Returns is terribleness, <laughs> where it's just like not enough anything. Um, there were also, I'm sorry, there were also a lot of uh, man and, and nature versus machine metaphors that I saw through there, both in uh, Jor-El, his father, and Kal-El, Superman. Uh, what do you mean? Movie. In the beginning, uh, Jor-El rides on uh, a flying animal on Krypton while he's being chased by machines. How Avatar of him. Right. And um, Superman, when he fights, he has just his suit on. He doesn't wear the armor that the other Kryptonians wear. 
and it, a lot more mechanical. They all have their breathing masks. Superman is just breathing our atmosphere. Right, right. And a couple other points through there where it's visible. All right, and moving on just to the Catholicity rating. Um, uh, we thought that this movie had a very good overall tone to it in just like um, portraying Superman as a man, but a man who accepts his powers and he knows what to do with them. He's just, uh, you like him right from the start. Um, and you have to, like, I always, like, if you see Jesus in him, which uh, is the point, um, you can understand that, like, Superman like, and, like, Jesus, you know, they're pretty, pretty close to getting it right. Um, and just how, like, you can approach Jesus as a man, but also God. Um, what do you think? Uh, I agree, definitely. Uh, Christ metaphors always win major brownie points with seminarians. We like to see those. So I think overall we'd give this one uh, about an eight and a half or a nine on that Catholicity rating. It's very good. And in addition to the Christ metaphors, it was good morals throughout the movie. Yes. All the characters showed good moral backbone and, and moral character. Yep. Uh, um, and the overall rating. Overall rating. Great movie. Great I movie. enjoyed it. Eight Loved and a half, nine. Right up like, there. I'm going to get it. Winner. Blu-ray, DVD. Woo! It's going to be one of the top movies that I've seen in a long time. Um, I think I watched it at least twice in theaters. Yeah, three times for me. Twice during the summer, and then like, hey, let's go see it again. A quick guide for parents out there who may be interested in taking their children to see this movie. It is rated PG-13, so keep that in mind. Overall, um, the main, main issues concern, for that, yeah, main concerns, would be the violence. There certainly was a lot of violence. It's not like a Marvel movie. There was violence against civilians. You definitely saw yeah, civilians well, getting yeah. getting hurt. <laughs> the the um, soldiers getting beat up by the super people. You don't really stand a chance when the person that you're shooting at is like moving and like has the density of the sun coming at you to punch you in the face. Um, so yeah, like you see, you see a couple graphic things. Uh, a lot of it's in the background. Uh, Not much blood though. Well, yeah, there's one Was thing there? like I saw, and you guys should probably be aware of. Uh, there's a jet flying over. Uh, the, a huge super baddie rips the cockpit off, and he like grabs the person's head. And like it's in the background, but you can see uh, what he does. Um, so I think uh, you know, make sure your child is uh, like age appropriate. Like again, like the ratings thirteen are there. You know, they're there for a reason. But I think everybody should see this movie, um, regardless within the, realms within, of the, maturity. within the realms of maturity. I think it's good because the movie doesn't support these actions. It's not like the whole like atmosphere glorified. was um, lacked a moral fiber. It certainly was there. And although these things were bad, they were very obviously bad. Um, so that, there certainly was violence. And, and be aware of that. And if you're concerned about your child watching something violent, then I would watch it first and, and make your decision on that. As swearing, for the swearing, there uh, Not wasn't. much that I can remember. I can't um, remember anything. I mean, Lois much. is kind of expressive yeah. at one point where you're just like well That's all true. right there we go now we cross that line um but other than that uh not really much that you can really nitpick at and as for any sexual content there is obviously a relationship between superman and lois lane they're just getting to know each other so it gets up to the, the relationship builds up to the point where they're kissing yeah. at the end that's as bad <laughs> oh. as it gets so they get a an a plus for that yeah. that area yeah um other than that, you don't really have to worry about much. So now we've come to the, the part in our review where we're going to delve into more spoilers and really try and take apart a little more of the plot. So if you haven't seen the movie, I would turn it off now if you plan on seeing it. If you haven't seen it and you don't really care, then go ahead and keep watching. Uh, if you have seen it, keep watching as well. All right. Uh, let's delve into more of the... Uh, the deeper aspects of like who Superman is. Um, to start off, I mean, there's a part in the movie that they just they just kind of throw it where it's like, okay, we're not kidding anymore. This guy's Jesus, and uh, they stick it in a church where 
Superman has a choice where he can like hide from Zod, who's finally found Earth, or he can face Zod directly. And Superman doesn't know if we are ready, you know, if we deserve to be like protected or anything. And um, he goes to see a priest. And there's a bunch of imagery back there behind both the priest and Superman, where you can see like in the background, like, oh, hey. It's a picture of Jesus. Like, oh, hey, look at that. Like, Behind Superman in that scene is a stained glass window of the agony in the garden. So the moment where Christ was trying to decide um, whether he, he definitely wanted to follow his father's will, but at the same time, he didn't want to have to die for humanity. Uh, he knew he had to die and he wanted to, to save us, but he didn't want that to be the only option. So the... Christ's agony in the garden is very much what Superman was going through, whether or not to turn himself in to save humanity and possibly sacrifice his own life. Which I just thought, like, if you're not if you're not a Christian and you're not familiar with that kind of thing, that scene could have been like off putting, I can imagine. Like, oh now they're just trying to show, shove it down my throat. Too bad. It's really cool. Um, and, and even beyond that, um, some of what I noticed throughout, it starts out and he's born of a, his father and mother not on earth. He's sent to earth with, uh, in one of the trailers, his father said to, to have humanity follow him and one day they will join him in the sun is, is the quote that's so cool. And he's supposed to lead humanity, you know, will stumble, will fall. He's supposed to sacrifice himself for humanity. He comes to earth, he's adopted by a foster mother and foster father and his foster father dies when he was a um, teenager somewhere in there he works all his life on the one scene shows him on a uh, fishing boat like Jesus worked in a carpentry shop he lives until he's 33 years old the age Christ was when he died until that's when Zod finds him and Zod comes and says you have to be made accountable for um, for the sins of your father, and it, I will take it out on all of humanity unless you turn yourself in. And that's where he faces his struggle of whether to turn himself in and, um, and sacrifice his own life or to hide and run from, from what he's supposed to do. And when he turns himself in, he doesn't turn himself into Zod. He turns himself over to humanity as Christ did. Christ turned himself over to us in his very coming to earth. But when um, Christ was sentenced to death by Pilate and the Jews, uh, he said he, he let himself be bound. And when he was on the cross, the, they looked up at him and they said, if you're really the son of God, why don't you come down from that cross and save yourself? And one of the scenes Lois Lane says to Superman when he's handcuffed, which wouldn't do much for Superman, he could just break out. And, uh, she says, why don't you just break out? Why are you letting us handcuff you? Um, and he says, that's, that's what I have to do. It, it wouldn't be much of a surrender if I didn't. Yeah, that was, that was kind of cool. Um, Superman uh, eventually has to fight Zod, the eternal struggle, bet the eternal struggle between good and evil. Um, and, you know, like, I kind of overlooked the fact that, you know, he could have maybe gone to see um, Jor-El um, to, like, find out more about Zod, mainly because like Superman didn't know much about Zod, um, except the fact that you know they, they were um, asking for him to come and surrender themselves or surrender himself to them. Um, but eventually they do have to fight. And this leads to, I guess one of the more questionable, uh, if you're, you're curious, like you know Superman never will kill ever. And originally, um, Zack Snyder and Chris Nolan, who produced it, uh, they were just going to have Superman throw everyone, including General Zod, back into the Phantom Zone. This does not happen in the movie because Zod escapes. He's not caught with the rest of his crew in the Phantom Zone because they thought it was anticlimactic if he did. So if you didn't see the movie, um, Zod's ship was over Earth. They were trying to terraform Earth into another Krypton so that they could rebuild Krypton. And um, 
while they did it, they figured out how to open a portal into the Phantom Zone, which is a kind of like the prison where Zod and his crew were before. And they crashed Superman's pod that carried him to Earth when he was an infant into Zod's ship and caused this reaction which sucks all of Zod's crew into the Phantom Zone. Um, but at first, Zod was going to be with them. Later, they wrote Zod out of that scene. He was elsewhere right. so that they could have the final battle. Which levels Metropolis. Yeah, as if uh, the ship didn't do enough damage. Yeah. Steve and I kind of disagree on this. The action between Zod and Superman, which I loved, um, uh, I kind of think of it as like uh, Pacific Rim in like the action style where it's like they're fighting in cities, leveling cities. And you don't really know, you know, like whenever you watch Godzilla and like he's wrecking buildings and stuff like, oh, there's no people in there. Just just get back to the action. Uh, it's Labor Day. Yeah. For this movie, though, like you kind of have to see that there is like there are people in those buildings that Superman and Zod are fighting through. Um, and they leveled Metropolis, which, you know, Steve, of course, is... Uh, I disagree. Uh, I enjoyed the movie greatly, but when it got to this final scene, there were a couple times I found myself, just kind of my eyes were glazed over, just everything was getting destroyed. Uh, it wasn't enough that the, the ship that Zod had had started this circle of destruction that was spreading through the, the heart of the city, I'm just noise wiping out, out everything, that, turning that it to dust. So, quick, quick little nice. joke in there. Um, so once they're done leveling Metropolis, they get to the, the questionable part where Superman has a choice. Kill Zod, save the people, or let Zod live, vaporize those people, and, I don't know, you're back to square one. They kind of wrote it so Superman didn't really have much of a choice. Uh, and this is the part, the violence part that um, that we should probably make you more aware of is that uh, Superman breaks Zod's neck. Uh, you don't really see, you hear the crack. And you know what happened. And you, you obviously know what happened. Um, and it raises a question, you know, like, you know, Superman never kills. He was forced to kill. Um, and he could have let those people die, or he could have ended Zod, and he chose to end Zod. Um, so, was he right? Should he have killed Zod? Um, I think uh, he didn't have a choice. Choose one or the other greater good is saving those people. Not in the killing itself. Um, that was just, you know, that was something that you know he had to do to save those people. His, his act was not in Superman. Like his Superman's mind was not like malicious or anything. Like he didn't have a choice, and that's why he like screams like, ah, I can't take this. Like why did why didn't he give up? Because um, Zod Zod gave him an ultimatum. Like I'm not gonna stop. You know, it's either you or me. So. Superman's like, well, them. And I think what's what's different in this case is that it wasn't premeditated. It wasn't as if Superman sat back and thought, well, Zod's a terrible person, a terrible uh, being. If I let him live, he will kill people, so I should kill Zod. That wasn't his reasoning. Um, he was fighting, trying to protect people from Zod. And the, the final scene, he's holding him in a headlock. Zod's laser vision is inching towards some civilians. And Superman's, it's all he can do to hold him back. So it's either pull back and snap Zod's neck or let him kill those people. And so it wasn't, his act was to save those people, not to kill Zod in order to protect people. It was specifically an act to save those people right. okay. and people in general. All right. So overall, to end, to end this video, uh, Superman, or well, Man of Steel is an excellent film done by... Uh, I, I like the director's work. Um, you can debate me on Watchmen, and uh, I think that's the only other Dark film Knight. I know that he did. No, Zack Snyder. That was Zack Snyder. He, yeah. Chris Nolan did the that's right. Batman stuff. Um, I enjoyed it great, uh, like greatly, so I'll be buying it when it comes out, and I encourage you to see it. If it's not, definitely good. Yeah. Definitely keep in mind the age appropriateness, yeah. but overall, <laughs> I enjoyed the movie. I thought it was great. Mm -hmm. uh, and thanks for watching. Uh, up, up next, hopefully soon, we'll be reviewing uh, 
World War Z. And after that, we're looking ahead to see what's coming out in the theaters, maybe looking behind, seeing some old favorites as well to get some reviews out this semester. So thank you so much for watching. We hope you like and subscribe the seminary page. Check out our other videos and other stuff on Sem Casual. And thank you for watching. God bless.